Welcome back to For Right Lives Now on this Friday morning. We've got our next live guest joining us here this morning. Mark Solomon, one of our writers who writes a lot about the warehouse and the development space, and that's what we're talking about today. Mark, thank you for being here. And we've got some pretty interesting news because we've got Prologis on one side saying, hey, we're looking to continue developing. Neighbors, residential neighbors specifically saying, I don't want this in my backyard. Talk to us a little bit about the fight between warehouse developers and these residents who don't want that development to happen. Uh, good morning. It's the um, ongoing battle between commerce and quality of life. Um, communities understand the benefits of having goods delivered quickly, conveniently, but they don't want it next door to them. Um, particularly next door to schools or firehouses or any place that that would be considered a, I guess, a staple of the community. Warehouse developers, uh, well, commercial developers that work in the warehouse space are willing to compromise. They're, that's what they tell you. They're willing to work with communities. They're willing to uh, understand and embrace their concerns. But at the same time, they want to do business and the demand remains strong to construct warehouses. I mean, demand has come down a, a ways in the last 12 months, but no one is expecting long-term demand for warehouse space to abate. So there needs to be a happy medium. Um, at this point, developers believe that communities uh, have the edge that the, the the pendulum is swinging towards them, but at some point, uh, the developers believe that communities will see the benefits of warehouse development, of uh, strategically located warehouse development, prudent warehouse development, and back off of their concerns. And Margo, as we look at this warehouse development, of course, it's been something that's been propping up a lot of ease and convenience for a lot of folks as e-commerce continues to grow and the demand for having goods faster continues to increase. Are there any states or even cities that are really being focused in on or really seeing more activity than others? California and New Jersey uh, are the, the poster children on both coasts for uh, aggressive anti-warehouse sentiment. Um, they have very active communities, uh, activist organizations backing them. Uh, both states have very um, strict permitting regulations, particularly as it revolves around environmental concerns. Um, and at the same time, both states are densely populated. Both states have people that want, you know, citizens that want and need goods delivered. And they're both big commerce centers. They, both states have major airports and seaports, major interstate highways. Uh, they are major arteries for warehouse development. So those are the two states where where the action, I guess, is more visible. It, it's happening all over the country, Anthony, but most high profile are those two states. So, of course, Mark, we can't talk about the warehouse development side without also talking about supplemental infrastructure that often has to be developed when you're talking about putting a bigger space like a warehouse in residential land. You, of course, have to have maybe a look at your roads. You have to have a look at what your power infrastructure looks like if you're talking about establishing a space that will have a pretty big draw on the grid. And a lot of that comes down to not only just the warehouse developer themselves, but also city or county planning and zoning as well. Is there that kind of collaboration where it seems like the warehouse developers and your city county zoning are teaming up and it's kind of them versus the residents? Or has there been any pushback from the city's counties themselves as well? Oh, oh no. Kaylee, the, the planning and zoning commissions in particular in New Jersey and California uh, are, are more adversarial than they are cooperative with the developers. Um, I'm not saying that's always the case there in New Jersey, there are 565 municipalities 
Each one has a, depending on the size of the municipality, they either have separate planning and zoning commissions or in smaller municipalities, they're combined. Uh, some states, excuse me, some municipalities are easier to work with than others. Um, in, but in general, if I were to take a very anecdotal pulse of where things stand between planning and zoning commissions and developers, I would say that the, the regulators are kind of taking the side of the communities at this point in time. That may change, uh, but right now it, it appears that that the the regulators, those who are the you know, the, pretty much the the safeguards of of land and development, are taking the side of communities. And Mark, we're looking at this development. Are we seeing that there's going to be any pivotal timelines or? any marks that we're going to be watching for throughout 2024 for any kind of shifts in any developments? Uh, one issue that was brought up to me uh, by a gentleman in New Jersey who works for development interests is that many localities are still f relatively flush with pandemic relief funds that were doled out by the states because they have that cushion, they feel that they can be more uh, amenable to the community concerns. Uh, but what a warehouse does or warehouse development does, among other things, is expand the tax base and the, and the revenue base of these localities. So as this COVID money dwindles, the locality can planning and zoning commissions will be under increasing pressure to find other sources of revenue. That's where warehouse development plays a critical role. So as the COVID relief funds are depleted, you'll have a, a different chain, a different attitude on the part of planning and zoning commissions for the economic and financial benefits accruing from warehouse development. Uh, that's the argument on the development side, but whether, you know, we'll see what happens as the year progresses. It seems like we walk a pretty fine line between the economic benefits versus the detriments to the residents. Mark, thank you for joining us with this story. Anything else that you're working on right now that we should be looking out for soon? Mm, nothing at this moment, Kaylee. I, uh, I'm continuing to push for different angles on different stories, but nothing at this time. Awesome. But thanks for us. Always insightful to have you on. Always great to have you on. So we'll be sure to check in with you as maybe we hear some more NIMBY and Warehouse News coming up a little bit later on in the year. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend.